I would be alive at this period of time so close. I mean, I, I always wanted to be alive around 20, you know, at least by December 21st, 2012, but here we are, uh, less than two years away. Well, I mean, uh, according to Kalaman, we're in the last year of the, the calendar, so, uh-huh. um, things are certainly happening. The things are speeding up. There's no question about that. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Well, I've always known I'd, I'd be here up until this time. Well, longer actually, because we're going into a time where um, we go into age reversal, and ah. we'll, we'll have total health and age reversal. Because once you're in a high enough frequency, you don't get sick anymore. That's right. And 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 you're not uh, the genes that were snipped. We have our DNA that causes premature death. Uh, right. Are no longer in operation. Right. So all of those things that were tampered with by advanced civilizations many hundreds of thousands of years ago will be fixed. They'll Which be are being reconnected, and I think that was all part of, of my week event um, last week, you know, with, oh. with part of the DNA. Oh. You know, I mean, I think it goes in stages. Well, it would almost have to, or else we wouldn't be able to take it all at once. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you get pretty you you're one of the few people I know who experiences uh the shifts and the energies really intensely. I mean you're a very intuitive uh sensitive um that uh, picks up on all this stuff. Oh yes. And, you know, so you feel every I mean what might seem like a, a, a gust of wind to somebody else might blow you through that all the way through the house and out the window. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. I'm sitting on a vortex too. You know, in my house. Oh. Oh. Okay. You know, which makes it it everything intensifies at my house. <laughs> and so that's probably why I feel it so high. But like I can be perfectly fine one day, you know, and just really yeah. happy and everything. And then the next day just totally down, you know. Oh it's me like too. A, me like too. a wave hits and it just knocks me out. Me too and I just and I can't pull out of it. Right. And then I, I the you all you can do is just wait until it passes. That's right. I had one of those today. I couldn't pull out of it. It was just, uh, it, I, it was, it happened, kaplunk, and I had to accept it and let it go, and I ended up doing nothing all day. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, and it just, I had to accept the fact that this is what I, this is what I can do today, right now. Uh huh. Tomorrow will be different. Um, I know. You know, I've heard that from so many people, and I don't know how people. How light workers have been able to hold down a full time job and go oh through this. God. I just don't know how they can do it. I don't either, uh, uh, Mahala. I really don't. I haven't done, I haven't understood that for over 10 or 12 years. Uh huh. Because I saw 12 years ago that that was a racket. This whole system that we're in is a racket set up to enslave us. Right. You know, with taxes and, I mean, our audiences, listeners know all this stuff, so I don't want to preach to the choir, but, um, how anybody can maintain their energy, uh, and have all of these pulls in life and uh, pulling them apart, you can't remain centered. There's no way that you can remain centered. I know, it's really hard. I've been working on trying to be, stay centered for a long time, and I think I've gotten there, and then boom, along comes oh, yeah. another wave. Same here, same here. And sometimes, you know, I don't have to be off my property, and I'm surrounded by trees and beauty and all the rest. I mean, there are chemtrails overhead, of course. That uh-huh. uh, goes without saying, but um, I figure when I see the end of those, that's going to be a sign that something... Something positive is happening, uh, but uh, there are days when uh, I get knocked around too. And I, I thought, I think to myself, oh, those poor people that have to, you know, go to these corporate jobs and and work for people that they don't like, and you know, it, it, and plus the economy is tanking. So there's yes. so much going on now that's forcing us to look at our lives and really figure out what we want and I think it's forcing us away from the material and into looking within into a, a more spiritual uh, spiritually centered uh, connection yes very definitely it's been, yeah it's been so off balance uh, you know with the patriarchal society and with uh, the divine feminine practically written out of history 
um, you know, there is no her story. So uh, <laughs> right, yeah. You know, maybe, that, maybe we need to write a book about the the real history of Earth. <laughs> well, someday, yeah, I think so. And, uh, yeah, that might be real interesting. <laughs> uh, it would, if we could find out the truth, that would be, you know, that would be the main thing. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I don't know how yeah. people do it. So we now, do live it. Well, you have to admit that we do live in interesting times, yeah, and you never well, know what a day will bring. True. That's true. And also, um, our lives, or our lives are, our, uh, you know, are our teachers. The synchronicities that come to our lives, that is the teacher, the teaching tool that we can use because we're given things <clears throat> in our lives that are designed to help us awaken and so if we're if we're more awake we can start making connections between oh yes this this dropped i mean not everything doesn't mean something but uh there are times when you can make connections and see that yes there was an 1111 on the radio and and it just happened to be in a moment when you know i was thinking about x y and z and the pyramids or whatever so uh-huh. you know there's a lot that we can tune into in the higher frequencies just, you know, while we're doing our daily business. Our, um, you know, that's right. Yeah, it's very important to stay in our heart energy. Yes, yes. You know, the heart is, is basically um, our controlling center. You know, it runs everything. Because mm-hmm, we have the mm-hmm. three brains. You know, we have the brain in our heart, the brain in our head, and the brain in our solar plexus. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so the strongest one is uh, the brain in our heart. The brain in the heart, yes. And it sends out all of these um, magnetic or electrical charges. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's the one that we really need to tune into to to get the the best and quickest information. Yes, um, very definitely. Yeah, because the brain in the head is the slowest of the three. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> And yet it thinks it's the fastest and the smartest. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and we'll often try to convince us that, oh, don't, oh no, that couldn't be true. No, no, no. <laughs> right. Forget about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So get into your, have you, it's into your heart. Yeah. Um, have you watched um, any of uh, Dan Winter's um, uh, uh, CD or videos? No, I haven't. Oh, I was watching one just the other night, and he was talking about the heart. You know, and with uh, because he does, you know, the geometry and and the math and all of that with oh, it, and okay. so I'm going to rewatch that one. Um, it's excellent. Is it on YouTube? Yes, it is. Okay, good. And I think that you can probably just go into Dan Winders, you know, and look for for um, the video on the, the heart. Oh, good. And um, also, Carl Coleman wrote a wonderful piece on the uh, period uh, between March 9th and October. Uh, 28th, and it's strictly about that period. And also, Barbara Han Clow has a new um, analysis of the new moon, which we just went through, and what this period of time signifies and how it dovetails into the end of the year. So uh-huh. those are those are she. That's her astro flash. Uh huh. And so those are. Yeah, all she's over. really good. Oh yeah, and of course she works with the Pleiadian uh, system of nine dimensions. So right. Um, and. Uh, you know, we talked about the possibility that our star, our sun, is part of the uh, Pleiadian system because the... the uh, yeah, we're the eighth, eighth star of the Pleiadian. We're the eighth star, yes, and that makes sense. When, you know, if you uh-huh. Okay, to... hold on just a second because my, my bat, phone battery's going dead. I'm Uh-oh. going to get on another one. All right. Okay, you still there? Uh, yep, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, I don't like that. Um, that's one of the things that batteries don't work too well in my house. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yes, well, you, you, your energy probably throws them all off kilter. Yes. <laughs> now, and listen. I have to replace batteries so often, it's not even funny anymore. Oh, I know, I know. Well, we're we're going to be seeing a lot of that with our cars and the rest of it. What's going on in the? Oh, I already had my car. My car battery went dead. Um, went, went during the when the magnetic pole was shifting. Uh huh. And I wouldn't have thought too much about it. I thought, but the battery was. You know, I just had it for a year. And so I was wondering, well, why did it go go bad? What is there something else wrong with my car that made my battery go dead? You know. But huh. then when a friend called up, and she lives across the valley from me, and she also lives her house is on a Stargate, and her car battery went dead on the same day. Okay. And that's kind of a coincidence, you know. <laughs> yes. And so I thought, oh, was that something with the magnetic flux that? 
that happened <laughs> yes. during that that uh, magnetic shift. Well, I'm wondering if there was actually a if there actually is a pole reversal, then nothing that we have that works presently with the poles the way they are will work. Was that uh, accurate? In well, other words, you, you, they, you can't just switch the poles because batteries are worked with positive and negative, and if the if the whole um, Earth's pole flips, then batteries be, you have to design a new battery to work the other direction. <laughs> Well, we'll see, won't we? We'll yeah, see. that's something to think about. Yeah, we'll but see. I know that my batteries, um, since that time period, have been been going out. In fact, the the battery in my modem for my computer went out. I didn't know there was battery in there. Oh yeah. Now I thought it would be nice to end on a really positive note. And in your report, your recent Planet Alert, um, you say you mentioned that we do have some nice energy coming to Earth on February tenth, twenty eleven. That will affect us for eight years. Um, and yeah. do you want to talk about that briefly? Okay, that's a, the planet uh, Chiron. And Chiron, I think, was becoming a, a kind of an important planet, and I think that that rules the sign of Virgo. But when that moves into Pisces, Pisces um, normally, without any interference, is a very gentle sign. And then we're also are now in the year of the rabbit. Um, it's a metal rabbit, so it's not as gentle as a water rabbit would be, or an earth mm. rabbit. But it's still the year of a rabbit, and that's gentle energy. And so when we have planets that are start moving into a gentler sign, I mean, we'll still have the the um, real dominant sign of Jupiter and Aries and Uranus and Aries, but, but we have on the other side um, uh, Chir- Chiron in Pisces, you know. Uh-huh. So it gives us an easier time to tune in to the more gentle energy and move into the love vibration. Yes, and you said that uh, the sign rules cosmic consciousness, which yes, is something we, we all attain, would like to attain, and that now we will have the opportunity to tune into cosmic bliss. Yes. And uh, Neptune will move into Pisces, a water sign, on April 5th, 2011, and this will be uh, a time of easy access to bliss consciousness. Right. Now, that sounds great to me, too. <laughs> uh, but you have to be on the high frequency to be able to do that. Okay, so we've, so we've so, got to get ourselves to stay on the high frequency. Okay, and that involves and learn to adjust to the energy coming in. <laughs> all right, well, that's what we've been talking about all evening too, huh? Uh huh. <laughs> well, and also to for people to read your your uh, monthly planet alert. So oh. before we uh, before we sign off, um, be sure and tell people where you can be found and where your planet alert is. Yeah, okay. Um, my website or my blog is www.mahalas, M-A-H-A-L-A-S, astrology.com, and my email is planetalert at hotmail.com. And so you could either go into the website or um, you could you know, send me an email. Wonderful. And it's a great report. I, I just live for it each month. And so, well, thank you. Um, yeah, this has been a particularly good one. And I, I, I love the sound of what's coming. Um, you know, the bliss consciousness and the cosmic consciousness. So I'm going to focus on those things and your wonderful vision of the new earth, which, uh, is an inspiration for all of us. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming back, Mahala. I love having you on the show, and we always have a fun chat. And uh, Yes, that was fun. And hang in there. Uh, we're getting close, and we, we'll have to <laughs> talk again in a couple months. <laughs> yeah, okay, that'd be great. All right, thanks again, and good night. You're welcome. Night-night. <laughs> 